participating in our Sharewell Service Management 5.0 presentation today. This is a high-level overview showing you some of the best features of the new Sharewell Service Management platform. My name is Matthew Peoples, and I'm president of Advanced Marketplace, and I'll get us started with our presentation. And then I'm going to hand it over to Mary Ellen Lawrence and let her actually do some product demonstration and talk about some specifics that we've seen customers work with. All right, Mary Ellen, first slide. So a brief history about Advanced Marketplace. We've been in business almost 19 years at this time. Our corporate offices are based in Tampa, and we've got employees scattered throughout the continental U.S., both technical and sales resources. We've been recognized uh, as one of Inc. 5000's fastest growing companies the last couple of years. Uh, we have also have a GSA schedule for customers that are uh, responsible in the public sector, along with cleared resources for customers that are DOD uh, specific. One of the things we're most excited about is our recent recognition by Forrester Research is one of the top performing ITSM consulting companies in North America. Uh, we've got customers that love us and like the things that we do. We feel like we do a pretty good job, so it was great to finally have a industry expert behind us also agree and verify that we are uh, definitely worth using as a consulting company. That's specific to the service management side that we're going to cover today with shareable service management. But there's some other pieces that we do as well I want to mention briefly. Uh, today we've got a background around application lifecycle management as well. Uh, and um, we spend a lot of time working with customers in mobility and device management uh, as well. So next slide, Marilyn. So Marilyn, I'm going to hand this over to you and let you talk for these next couple of slides and let you begin into our uh, product demonstration. Yeah, it sounds great. So this slide is um, outlining the different modules or functionality pieces within ShareWell. So there's two pieces I want to talk about there. First of all, I mean, as you can see, this is um, a, a encompassing suite of modules for service management. And unlike many of the other enterprise management tools that we've used before in the past, and what you get with your license is all of these things except for the asset discovery piece in the bottom left. So you know, not, to, not to keep harping on it and repeating this one area, but it's just uh, something that was amazing to us when we um, began working with ShareWell that the, the second words out of our mouth after the sale was completed was, oh, you want that, you need to purchase this piece of functionality. So the things that you see here are what you get with your licensing, and it's something that you can grow into. Uh, it's almost impossible to get down the road years from now and say, oh, now I need this, and it not be part of the suite that you're already provided. So a couple other areas that I want to talk about. Um, it, in this short of time, I, just, I can't tell you all of the, the things that we love about the ShareWell platform, but we have five things here that we've outlined that we think are really important differentiators uh, from other enterprise management, software management suites. So we've got a development platform across numerous lines of business, not just IT. So unlike um, other products that are just focused on IT, the platform that ShareWell provides you with allows you to then take the objects, create new objects instead of an IT object, potentially having things for HR, for facilities, we have people that use it for uh, tracking different areas. It doesn't have to just stay an IT platform. Um, it also is very good at executive dashboards and reporting. Um, many tools leave reporting uh, to the customer, and that doesn't make sense in an operational mode when you need to understand the work that your people are doing and how they're performing. And it's very easy to customize in uh, the ShareWell software management suite, and I'll show you some of that today as well. Truly codeless configuration. This is really true. Um, unlike many of the other platforms, you do not need to be a programmer to work with this software. And I'll just give you a couple examples um, during our presentation today. But that's something that we could do a follow-up demo for you on and, and show you truly how things are done, done with widgets, drag and drop, um, and selection of things that are already within the tool to build your configuration. So the modern architecture, um, this is really, really important. And you may not believe me when I say it, but a typical upgrade of 
um, share well, the typical upgrade of the platform will take about an hour. Um, not months, not years, but about an hour. And we can explain that to you in more detail as well. But because of the platform that this is built on, you are upgrading the platform, the foundation, and your configurations come with you. You're not having to go through um, hours and hours of conflict resolution reports to make sure that your upgrade is completed successfully. And I already talked about it a little bit in the previous slide, but it's the inclusive pricing. Uh, the integrations, we'll talk about that with mergeable applications. Um, portability, you can be on SaaS. You can decide initially that you want to be on a SaaS platform. And within an hour or two, we can flip you over to an on-prem um, implementation. The, the code is the same regardless of the platform that you're running on. So you can pick it up and move it really easily and, and not have to be stuck with the decision that you make right out of the gate. Now, did you have anything to add on those areas? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay, that sounds good. Then I'm going to go ahead and jump into the uh, demonstration then. Share. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to talk about is the self-service portal within ShareWell. Uh, let me blow up my screen here a little bit so you get a little bit more full screen. Um, I really love this portal because it's all about the customer, and it's also really easy to configure. So first of all, the configuration um, is done with widgets. There's no HTML involved. You can change the color. You can change the skin on this. Um, and you don't have to hire a web programmer to do those kinds of things. As you can see, it sort of encompasses the what about me of the customer. So we're going to go into a couple of these different areas. You've got, you're, you're able to go into a catalog, open incidents. You've got knowledge. You've got my items. You have a community discussion board. And these things can all, because they're widgets, and I'm going to show you when we get into the dashboards and reports, Anything that you see in, um, on the, the regular client as far as reports and dashboards and queries can be rendered here in the portal. Just as an example, there's a community discussion board out here. But a lot of our customers use this area to put um, really important things to their environment, things that are happening right now, things that are coming up over the next weekend that the customers should be aware of. You can see up here I can put in charts, and, and you can look at not just your own things as a customer, but things in this case that are impacting your department or your organization. And you can see that I can have just queries of these tickets available here. I also can have um, refreshable dashboards here. So if I go back over to the main page here of the portal, you can make this as easy or as complex as you want to. And I'll start with the easy part first. Let's say that right out of the gate for portal users, you don't want it to be too big. You don't want to overcomplicate things. And you want to just allow your users to open up a ticket within ShareWell. So I clicked on Open an Incident. And in this case, you can see that I've got two boxes and a couple of radio buttons. I can't get to my email. It asks a little bit about the scope of this. Does it affect multiple users? Nope. Does it prevent you from doing your work? Yes. And any comments that you have. Now, if you wanted to have them categorize the ticket or add additional information here, you can add fields to do that easily as well. This is an example of just how to get started and get your customers um, a, a place to start submitting their incident. I'm going to go ahead and submit that, and we'll look at that over on the client side here in a minute. So I have my ticket it's in the client, and I'm going to go show you how this can be made a little bit more formal. I'm going to go into the service catalog now. Now the service catalog, and this can be laid out in many different ways. There are different defaults out of the box uh, for different colors and different um, drop downs and layouts. But um, just to take you through this, this is the service 
category, and subcategory. A lot of tools are very complex when it comes to um, publishing a catalog. In ShareWell, and when we go into the system um, as a client, as a technician, I'm going to show you that these are the same categorization structures that we have when opening up tickets. And it's as easy as adding a new service, a new category, and a new subcategory, or multiple subcategories, and clicking whether it's visible or not on the portal. If you click Visible to the Portal and click Save in that categorization table, it's published to the service catalog. Now you can have that published to the service catalog and you just ask them what they want. Or as you can see, uh, when we get down into something as complex as employee support, it can be very specific about the information that you're asking the customer. In this case, I'm going to go through employee support, add change, new employee setup, one of the most common things that we have customers asking for. Now as you can see, I have a lot more than two boxes here to complete. So it's asking me um, the new hire, and I can hire match back. Matthew's here. Just fill out some of these fields here. You can make them required or not required. You notice that we have cost available here, so whatever is ordered can have a cost associated with it. And then the approvals can also be based on a hierarchy, an organizational hierarchy, or based on some sort of financial decision. Out of the box, ShareWell has an approval of the manager of the person who's entering the request but that can be modified based on your business requirements. So I'm going to make a start date, and I don't want to go into all of the detail here, but what I want to show you is that this form that we're filling out here is what we call a specifics form. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but this is really um, a, a nice thing about ShareWell because these are actionable forms with fields that can be reported on, or can be used for workflow. So every time I'm picking something here, and in this case I have a table that has the devices that can be selected. Um, I can pick software. Each of the things that I pick here can drive the back and workflow associated with this and open up, automatically open up tasks that are um, put into the appropriate queues for this request to be fulfilled. I'll go ahead and submit that, and we'll take a look at that. Now, here's a little subtle thing that, that came up. In our um, initial one where we were having um, an issue with email, it was an incident. In here, I'm asking for something. It's not broken. It's a request, and this is a service request has been added. And I'll show you that when we get into the system. But the tool does differentiate between incidents and requests because you're probably going to want to have different SLAs associated with them and potentially different groups assigned to uh, either fix or fulfill them. And then one final piece I'm going to show you up here on the portal is that um, knowledge management is also part of the suite that you get. Um, you can decide whether knowledge is published to the portal or not. As you probably would want to do, you have um, more stringent review requirements and potentially approvals associated with things that your customers are going to see. Let me just go ahead and pick one of these um, articles. Uh, I have the most uh, popular ones published first, or I could have done a search. The knowledge articles can have screenshots in them. They can have attachments. It's rich text. Um, so they can look really nice. Uh, in this case, we have seeded our knowledge base with um, knowledge, CAM knowledge from knowledge brokers that are, um, that are vetted and cleaned up knowledge about lots of different very common subjects. In this case, I think it's the, the Microsoft Office um, side of things. So when you're working in the articles, they can say, no, this didn't fix my issue. If I do that, it will log an incident automatically for them. You can add a comment, and you can like and dislike. One other thing I'm going to show you is uh, probably one of my favorite things. It's called Me Too. 
um, I'm going to go into top issues. And so when you have an incident or a problem in the environment, you can indicate that it's a top issue and publish it to the portal. In this case, they don't look too exciting, but uh, the printing issues seem to be something that, that, that is really bugging people. So I look at this and I say, printer not printing. What I can do instead of going out and opening up a ticket is I can click on this thing called Affects Me Too. And if I click on Affects Me Too, it automatically opens up an incident for me. In this case, it also related it to a known problem. And that means that I'm part of, I'm subscribed to that. I'm part of any of the notifications or the workflow that's associated with that known incident and problem. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty quick overview of the portal and all of the different options that are available here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and take you into the client as a technician. Now I'm going to assume that, um, that, that most people are familiar with standard incident management, change management flows. So what I want to do is focus on the differentiating areas within each of those, those pieces. So uh, first of all, when we come in here, I'm on a, a full client, a Windows client. There's also a fully functional uh, web browser client for the technicians. There's also a mobile client that allows the technicians to see the work, to update them, and to close their tickets. Um, and then there's also something called a dashboard viewer. This same dashboard that I'm seeing here can be put onto a big screen maybe in a computer room or on an executive's desk. Um, and all it is is it allows them to view only, not go into the tickets, but it can view all of these different dashboards and it's automatically refreshed to give them a, a thumbnail sketch of what's happening in the environment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is kind of the show-off dashboard. I mean, it shows you all of the different kinds of things that you can put into your dashboard. Typically, what we see in our implementations is that the My Work dashboard is the most popular one for the service desk and for the technicians. And then something more global to be able to see what's happening in the environment of all of the incidents or all of the problems. Um, you can set these dashboards up by role so that uh, you know, you're not inundating specific roles with too much information. What I really like about the dashboards is that it's not something that you have to have a highly trained administrator manage for you. In fact, with very little training, people can set up their own dashboards. And just give you a glimpse of that. Um, and this is, this is throughout ShareWell and the power of the platform is that you never feel like you're, you're starting something from scratch. There are so many queries and widgets already built in here based on the experience of, of hundreds of implementations of what customers commonly ask for. So I'm in here in an edit mode. <coughs> Excuse me. And over on the left side, um, these are the widgets that are already available in the system to pick from and drag and drop over to, the, um, over to your dashboard. So you can see I can do different types of charts. I can do queries. But it's very, very rare that any of my consultants start from scratch on configurations on reports or on dashboards because of all of the pre-built um, areas that are in the tool already. Just, just extremely powerful. Maybe come out of there. The other thing <clears throat> that's really important, um, because I've managed multiple help desks, and what's really important to me is to be able to quickly get to reports that are meaningful to me. I don't have time to chase down or put in formal re requests to my crystal report team or to my business object team, I need to see my reports and the things that are happening um, in my environment. So um, there is a report um, module within the tool um, that has pre-built reports already and allows you, again, with minimal training to create your own reports. So for example, when I go into um, the management reports here and see yearly. I've got already these types of yearly reports that are available for me to just modify. 
And I'm just going to open one up just so you can see the types of things that you can do in them. Now, in this case, I just have a graph. Um, I have other reports where I can do a full report <coughs> a graph with the queries uh, and the totals for it. Okay. You can email these reports. You can save them out. You can put them into a PDF. You can publish them to the web. These are available on your dashboards. These are available on your customer portal as well. If I wanted to create a new report, I'm not going to go the whole way through, I promise. But you see what comes up is a report wizard. If I click Next through here, it's going to ask me, do I want an incident one? Do I want to change one? Do I want a config type of report? And what do I want to search against? And it's again, you should look at all of these. These are all prepackaged queries that you can just pull from. So um, you know, I can just pick a group, uh, a, a query against that, and I click on Next. And then it's going to ask me where the fields you pick from here, over to here. And never are you going into any sort of report true writing capability. You don't need to be at that level. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at incidents. I'm going to go in and create a new incident. I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go as quickly as I can without leaving anything behind. So let me just go ahead and quickly create a ticket here. There are some really unique things <coughs> about this tool that I want to show you. And I've worked with many large enterprise service management tools in the past. So, so it's kind of hard to wow me with things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a short description. I'm going to cheat and copy that over. And let's start doing this categorization. Wow, look here. You can see that the categories, these service categories that I had, I have in here are the same ones that were out in the portal. And out in the portal, we selected employee support. In this case, I want to go ahead and just open up an incident ticket. I'm going to say it's slow. Now notice there are a couple of things happening here. Based on the category structure, I have a similar incidents tab populating below. This is telling me what's happening in the environment now that could potentially be related to the thing I'm seeing. This may be your first indication of an outage that's happening. Um, the next thing I do is I'll go ahead and put in a subcategory. Now let me do that again because I'm not sure if you saw what happened before that. Let me take that out and put in my desktop client. I just have this one little box down here. As soon as I put in Submit Incident, again, here are these specific forms. So this is a really good way, a real powerful way you associate these specific forms to the category structure, and it presents you with fields for your service desk to say, <coughs> hey, look, you've got to fill out these fields. These are the things that our, our resolution teams need as prerequisites in order to quickly resolve this ticket. So specific forms are really important. I'm going to go ahead and put in a priority. And if I change this to a priority one, I have something called major incident that becomes clickable. So I can create a major incident for any priority one or two tickets, and a major incident allows me to link other incidents to it. So if you've got an outage and you, you claim this is now my lead ticket, you can link all of the other incidents that come in to that ticket. When that major incident is closed or resolved, the other tickets are resolved with the same resolution information, and notifications go out to the end user as well. So I can select a team. Configuration, hit that briefly. <clears throat> so if I want to show all of the um, configuration items, I can. they are listed by the different types that they have. So I have different configuration items with different attributes. You can pull these in from imports, from spreadsheets, or integrations with discovery tools. In this case, I'll go ahead and pull in a, a configuration item. 
Over here I have uh, information about the SLA. These are very nice. Email. Again, you can start out big. But you can have SLA to the customer, to the service, and to the CI. And what the tool will do is determine based on which SLA applies, whether the customer or service or, or CI, it's going to pick the one that has the shortest resolution time and apply that to the ticket. I really like that. Okay. Uh, just a couple other little things down here. All of your um, incidents can have tasks associated with them. So this allows you to start handing out additional work to people um, that may need to assist in the resolution of the incident. So you can either pass it on to a new team by escalating it, or you can assign out work with different tasks. Knowledge is always around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put email in here. Uh, what it allows you to do is pick different things. You can search. You can go out to common websites, and it'll issue that um, that text over to those um, different websites and pull back the different results and allow you to go look at them. It's also a very powerful search engine that allows you to go after already your existing tickets, your incidents, um, or your problems. In this case, I'll go ahead and pick a, a knowledge ticket, and I'm going to say, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I'm going to use it, use that solution, and it becomes part of my incident ticket. I think that's really powerful too. And then the, um, the, the validation of that knowledge as being good goes up, the relevancy, and it gets pushed to the, to the beginning of the stack again um, when the search happens. Okay, so I think that's the most important parts about uh, incident. Oh, one other thing I want to show you is something called one steps. And we're going to talk about these quickly um, in the next piece that, in the admin. So, Depending on where I am, in this case I'm in incident, I have different one steps that are available to me. And a one step is something where you can stream different uh, commands together, different things that are very common to your service desk or your technicians. And instead of having to go here and click here and click here and click here, you can click on one button and it will initiate all of those different steps for you. So I think that's something that's um, really powerful as well. I can ping a system. I can create a change from here, create a problem, nominate. Some of the other things for an incident side of things is clone a current incident, something that's really common in the, in the help desk area. And it allows you to, to, to smoosh them together, the technical term, um, and just have one click that will initiate those things. Okay, um, one other thing I want to show you here before we go into change. I'm going to take you into one of those request tickets that we talked about and the workflow that's associated with them. <coughs> Excuse me. And what we're going to see is that um, we have a couple of tickets. It looks like there's lots of new people starting based on the queue. Uh, I'm going to go into this ticket and show you that um, there was an approval that happened, and then there are different tasks that are already created for this workflow. So I have the approvals. In this case, it, this is the manager of Tracy who had to approve. Now, she didn't have to log into the system and navigate through the tool to do the approval. She received an email that said, Gina, Tra Tracy is ordering this, and there were two links. One link says deny, one says um, approve. She clicks on the approve if it's good, and it comes back in, and it, the ticket it is approved within the tool. She can also log in if she wants additional detail, but the inbound email approval is by far the most popular option. In this case, you can see that I have eight different tasks that are open for the fulfillment of this request. And in some cases, depending on what makes sense, you can see that this dependency has not been met. So you can set up dependencies among the different tasks to make sure they happen in the right order. I think that's really powerful as well. So in this case, you can't, you're not even going to be allowed to do anything with the task called install until the order 
task has been completed. Notice this is the ticket that was the new employee add change you set up. And you can see up here at the top that this is a request ticket and not an incident ticket. And again, you can set up your SLAs to be different depending on whether it's an incident or a service request. Okay, let me take you quickly into change management. And change management is very ITIL structured. Um, there are three different types of changes. There's an emergency change, a normal change, and a standard change. So an emergency change has technically the same phases that a normal change has, but one less approval um, because it is an expedited, not bogged down process, although some sort of approval should happen if it's deemed an emergency. The normal one is the, the I call it the heaviest. That sounds bad, but it's just really the more structured type. This is the one that could be invasive or have significant impact to the environment. It's something that introduces risk and something that you need to have um, assessed and approved. In the normal change, you go through a classify, a schedule, an implement, and a review stage. There are two different sets of approvals. One to determine whether it's even a valid change that should be in the environment. And then again, when it's scheduled and before it's implemented, and this is most commonly called the CAB review, to make sure that now that it's scheduled, is it going to be impacting any critical services that can't be down? So it's, it's, it's a lot more formal, and all of these different um, phases are tracked within the tool. Now what's nice about it though is as, as, as structured as normal can be, it, it takes you through a step view. And I'm not going to take you through this because it is a longer process, but I do want to show you that you notice I'm only getting um, you know, five or six different fields that I'm being asked to uh, put in here at this point. Uh, next would be CI. So it's taking you on a step view. If I click on the expanded though, I can see that it is a very structured uh, change that's available in here. So it's classifying, I get the CI, I assess it, I schedule it, I implement it, I review it, and then there can be a summary of that. So um, that's the normal. And then just to show you briefly um, the standard change, and this is something that for organizations that do not currently have a, a structured change management process in place but want to start somewhere, the standard change is a great place to start. Really, it's this one form right here. What you see is what you get with this. And you still can have a, you generally don't have approvals. If you need one, you can put one in. But standard changes are generally ones that are accepted not to introduce um, bad things into the environment. We've done them 55 times. We know it never has a problem with it. They're pre-approved standardly. And you can set up a change library of things that have already been pre-approved. There's also a process in the normal change to say, hey, this has been normal for a long time. I want to promote this or be, have this considered to be a standard change. So standard is a lot lighter, but it's a really great way for uh, organizations to at least start tracking the changes that are happening in their environment, putting in configuration items, and then publishing it to the change calendar. Okay, um, <clears throat> then I think what I'd like to do now is probably go over to the admin side. Let me go back um, to my dashboards. And a couple of things I want to hit on the um, administration side. As we've mentioned all along, you know, the, the fact that there's not heavy coding and not um, lots of um, super technical things that have to happen. Um, when we do an implementation, uh, a couple of weeks of working with the customers and having them go through the five-day class, um, the ShareWell Technical Administrator class, generally we see that um, any assistance with ongoing phases of the implementation, the need for any consulting is just significantly decreased uh, fast. 
So, um, you know, we generally assist people with the first part of their implementation. They go through training, and then you're very quickly enabled to be able to do the additional phases of, of what you want to grow and, and what other modules you want to add to your implementation. Let me go into the admin side here briefly. I just want to show you a couple of, oops, excuse me. Highlight a couple of areas within this tool that I think will surprise you. So one of the things I want to show you first is this thing called MApps, Mergeable Application. This is, this is new. Uh, for ShareWall 5 and something that has just uh, caught on like crazy. It's, it's a fantastic way to be able to bring new functionality into your tool without having to start from scratch. And ShareWall is putting things out on the uh, Mergeable Apps catalog and, and customers and partners are as well. So if there's a piece of cool functionality that somebody did, um, one of the most recent ones I saw from ShareWell was on-call. You didn't see an on-call module on that PowerPoint diagram that I showed you, but there's an on-call M app. So you download that M app, you apply it to your system, and it does the resolution that's needed, and then you have an on-call module in your system. I'll just give you a look at some of the other really powerful ones that we use a lot during our implementations. And these are around the um, integrations. You notice that there was no module that you have to pay for or, that you, or that's available that says integration. But that's because the integrations can be done via API, uh, database, or email. And the mappings for these different integrations are something that um, have already been evaluated and documented. So as you can see here, here's some of the really common um, integrations, the ADDM, we've got uh, BOMGAR as we go down through here. We've got um, SCCM, we've got SAS, Footprints. And so the nice thing about this is with these merchantable applications, if I download this, it's going to bring in all of those different pieces that are needed. So this is just something that's very exciting. I encourage you to look at the ShareWell website or the Advanced Marketplace website to learn more about those. Let me take you real briefly into automation because if I don't show you uh, this drag and drop, um, I haven't done my job. I'm going to go into automation processes. There are three different types of automation processes within the tool. There are are just simple action event based kinds of things. Like even when I was in the incident um, module and I showed you a one step that said ping, right? That just initiated a ping of the, the configuration item of the customer that was in the ticket. So those are all throughout the tool. And as you can see here, again, the same theme over and over again. These are pre-built. You're not starting from scratch. I want to show you, um, let me take you into the resolved to close process. For some of them that are threshold based, we have this visual workflow. And you have a start, you go through different one steps, there's an event, and there are different activities that happen. So uh, same thing, already pre-built. You have a start event. This is all English. So the start is saying that the status has changed to resolve. That's the start of this workflow. You can set up what work hours this workflow is valid through. You can limit the records. In this case, I'm limiting it to open incidents only. And you have an abort process as well. So I have all of these different pieces for each of these different areas. If I want to add something to this and I want to send out an email, here's what I do. I drag this over and I drop it. And then I can go into this email um, one step and I can configure that to be whatever the, the email template should be. 
So again, something that's just, I think just very powerful here. I'm in my email template that I need to create, and I don't have to do any coding. It's already exposing the different fields that I can have in my template. Okay, so again, the, the power of these workflows is the, the drag and drop of this. It's already got pre-done events and pre-done actions as part of it, um, and very easy to modify and configure. And again, not difficult to learn at all. I think that's probably what I have time for. I hope I've provided you with a, a good high-level overview of all of the different areas including the portal, uh, incident management, request, change management, a little bit about configuration management, and things we didn't have time to talk about include release management, project management, and, and a couple of other different really nice modules as well. So yeah, I was going to say, I didn't actually mention it when I first began, but we had a question section. If anybody's got questions, they can chat over in the section and ask questions. And while you've been going through, several people have found that. I've got a couple of questions for you uh, that we can wrap up here in the next five minutes to get these questions answered. Okay. So um, I'm sure that you would love to go show this, but based on the time we've got, just speak to them and answer them if you need to. Let's go show them, but you know, yes, some of these I think are going to be yes or no. Uh, so when you were going through uh, back around the catalog piece and you were creating some stuff under the catalog, the question came in that said, you know, if I create something that I like but I need 10 of those, is it easy to duplicate things from a catalog? So if they go create some tasks or some things under the catalog and they want to be able to duplicate that, is that difficult to do? Oh, no, no, no. That's really easy to do. I, you're right. I don't have time to show it, unfortunately. But that's a really common thing that is asked for. And we have a lot of customers who say, you know, I, I, I have I'm going to do this thing, and I need to have 30 of them. Um, it's just it's just a really common thing that we do with a one step. Yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing some of their question. They were they're a ServiceNow user, and they said that that if they were to try to do that with ServiceNow, it's a lot of scripting to do it, and they were frustrated and looking for an easy way. So good answer there. Uh, that it's easy to to duplicate those. So uh, same thing. So you're back on the dashboard here, and that was another question that came in when you're on the dashboards. Is it possible to duplicate dashboards? Oh yeah, absolutely. And again, it's the same thing, Matthew. And I know it's not you asking the question, but you know, everything everything is a widget-based kind of thing. And and these are blueprint. You can set up a blueprint or an M app to duplicate. You can say, I want this functionality, and to apply it here. You can even apply it to multiple systems if you want to as well. Good. Um, so this one, I actually, I can answer. The question came in, is it possible to get a copy of this, it, this presentation? Is it being recorded? And the answer is yes. Uh, Mary Lynn, at some point, if you'll bring up that last slide in the PowerPoint presentation where they can see the email address. If you're interested in getting a copy of this presentation, you can go to – or you can email sales at ampemail.com, and we will make access available to this uh, recording. Uh, another question that came in uh, specific to adjusting colors. I think you mentioned this when you were going through, but if they wanted to add their – company logo or if they wanted to add, make a color scheme, they maybe have got a, a, a corporate color scheme that they like. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a pretty easy thing to change, correct? Oh, it is. Um, it's something that you don't even need training for. Usually our customers, one of the first things we do with the, during an implementation is they want to get their skin on there as fast as they can, their own support hours, their own support phone numbers. And probably in about a half an hour to an hour, we're able to show them how to access the places where the widgets are and the color changes are, and that's something that that you, you need almost no training for just to be shown where to go. Yep, good. Okay. So this here's the, the most common question we get all the time, and you touched on it briefly about pulling the inventory information. Can you describe some of the integration? I almost said immigrations, the integrations that your team has seen with other systems. So you touched on a few of those. Um, anything else you want to add to what you said earlier? Uh, I would say that um, you know it's a combination of integrations for I, I think getting inventory in is the the first one that we see a lot of and we we do uh, a lot of Altiris integration for the for the desktop um, population of of configuration and SCCM for the um, servers and some of the infrastructure areas 
we're doing um, land sweeper more and more as well. I, 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 don't, I hadn't done that as much before with our other tools, but land sweeper is a very common one right now. And we just did one with, um, I thought this was kind of cool, it was with UC4, call, call, now called Atomic. And this goes back to a one-step thing where there are a lot of, um, for this one customer, they had a lot of really standard tasks that their service desk or their uh, resolution teams would have to do over on UC4 Atomic um, just to initiate commands to make things happen. And we created one step that went out and initiated those tasks on UC4 so that um, they didn't have to go log into the tool and you know, type in those three or four commands to do it. So I think those are yeah, that, that's some of the most common ones and then kind of a, a cool one I hadn't seen before. So Marilyn, I know that from our other side of our business, right, we do a lot of stuff with HP, and we had recently worked with a customer that was trying to, to pull in lots of a HP information, and they were using HP's CMDB and mm -hmm. having Node Manager and U you know, Universal Discovery feeding HP CMDB. Mm -hmm. and they wanted that to come over into ShareWell. That, I know that we ultimately did this, but that's an easy thing to do as well. If you've got an existing CMDB that you like, it's got a bunch of data, you can, you can connect that up to ShareWell as well, correct? Oh yeah, and, and I love those kinds because a, a lot of times those types of larger tools already have the relationships built. And you know, I didn't even get a chance to show the, you know, the cool graph that shows this item related to this item related, you know, all of the mappings. Um, but we just love it when we have the more complex discovery tools come into ShareWell because we are allowed to take advantage of that capability of the mapping of the services to the configuration items and make change management risk assessment that much more powerful. So this one just came in and, and uh, we're going to cut off questions at this point. We are two minutes over, but uh, I think this is actually one that we see pretty regular as well. Uh, this customer is using, they have end users that are going to look at knowledge and open their own tickets and the current solution they're using today, they have to pay for those licenses. And I know you mentioned briefly earlier uh, one of those PowerPoint slides talk about how easy it is to license ShareWell. So for end users that are coming and accessing the system, there's no charge for them, right? They're, they're basically not consuming a license by the way they enter and interact with ShareWell. Is that correct? That's, that's absolutely correct. And in fact, it, it's just better than a lot of the tools on the self-service portal who say that it's free. It, it's not only free to be able to open up your own tickets and look at the knowledge and access the knowledge base, but you're allowed visibility into your department or the organization, whatever the, um, the, you know, the, the company decides to do, and it's not just restricted to your thing. So it's, it's, it's you for free plus a little bit more. And I'll add to that, Mary Lynn, and this isn't a question, but I know we, we hear this often. Most other service management solutions, you have to pay every time you want to do an integration. So if you want to integrate to Altiris or HP, you have to go buy that integration. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with ShareWell, right? All integrations no. basically are, are no charge. They're included in, in when you buy the product. So. Yeah, and that's true. And, and you know, with some of these other products that we've worked with, what you were buying was not the technology. You were buying the, the mapping knowledge, right? You know, it looks like this here, but then it looks like here. It's over here in ShareWell or HP or wherever. And those mappings are, in fact, they're published as part of the ShareWell help file. So you can go out and look up SCCM in the ShareWell help, and it will tell you what the fields are over in SCCM that you need to be mapping to. And so there is no integration adapter that you have to buy. Um, and the knowledge on the mappings is available freely. Well, very good. Well, Marilyn, I thank you so much for your presentation. As always, you are good at not only showing the product but tying it back to customers and different things that we see in our environment. And I thank you everyone for participating in our overview today. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email us at sales at ampemail.com. Thank you.